the fitness level that you should be at while you are pregnant, the old rule of thumb, I think kind of still stands. You know, if you have been running half marathons beforehand, you can probably keep doing that. Um, you know, if you're not a high risk or, you know, carrying multiples or anything like that, but for the most part, you can continue to do what you've been doing now, minus contact sports probably should lay off the beach right. volleyball, like right. football. But as far as, you know, weightlifting, like for me personally, I still lift weights five to six times a week. Um, I have a walking um, treadmill or a, a walking desk. That is just the greatest thing in the entire world. Cause I can get my steps in while I'm working, which is just two birds with one stone for me. So that's really where I would suggest, you know, women to start off. If you've already got a foundation of fitness, you can pretty much continue to do that. It, the, the tricky part when it comes to it is doctors in this old school thinking, they'll tell you not to get your heart rate over, you know, hundred right. per minute, but that's just so inaccurate because when you become pregnant, you have like five pounds more blood in your body. Right. So obviously your heart rate's already going to be elevated as is. So when I was finishing my certification, it's actually recommended to go off of the perceived rate of exertion. So if you can still talk while you're doing it, it's fine. You can continue to do that. If you're gasping for air and you cannot breathe, pump the brakes, you know, your body's overheating and you're going a little too hard in the paint. So that's kind of the rule of thumb. And if you've, like I said, if you've been doing it, you probably can continue to do it. Now, obviously as you get bigger and your center of gravity changes, you might need to decrease the weight that you're using. You might need to, you know, make adjustments for certain exercises, but I would say 95% of my fitness routine is the exact same as what I was doing before pregnancy as to what I'm doing now. Um, and then as far as abs, cause I know that's a big concern, you know, for women is stomach area and keeping everything tight. Um, I go through on my blog and then I also have a free, um, pregnancy fitness guide on my blog as well. And it goes through TVA activation and breath work and core strength during pregnancy. And it doesn't take a lot of time. I do it maybe 10 minutes a day and I had amazing results. I didn't have much separation after I gave birth. Um, so it's just about, we always say, um, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of the cure. Mm -hmm. And so even if you can start, even if you're at 30 weeks, it's never too late to start. You know, you don't have to start on day one. You don't have to start the minute you found out you're pregnant, but just anything that can help. And it helps with labor. It helps with delivery. It helps yeah. with recovery. Like there's just so many amazing benefits to working out in a healthy pregnancy and even down to, you know, reduction of gestational diabetes. Um, you actually set the child up for, you know, lower risk of obesity if you remain active while you are pregnant. But if you're just starting out, I honestly would just recommend aiming for 10,000 steps a day. Like okay. that can That's just good. help so much with circulation and swelling and edema and blood pressure just to get active in some way can help so much. And I know in the first trimester, a lot of women experience, you know, nausea and extreme fatigue. And so what I always recommend is just when you're feeling good, maybe it's first thing in the morning, just do it then. Even if it's mm -hmm. for, you know, half an hour or whatever it may be, something is always going to be better than nothing. I but love then that. To your, to your other question, yeah. um, you know, if someone is wanting to lose weight in order to get pregnant or, you know, to work on conception, um, kind of the same rule of thought is, you know, figure out how many days a week you can get to the gym and say it's three days. Okay. Well then you'll want, you know, a lower day an upper day, and then a core day, or mm -hmm. if you can go five days a week, you know, just break up those workouts that way. And what's so great about now compared to when I started like fitness, like a decade ago, there's just so much information out yeah. there. So if yeah. you can find someone on Instagram or on YouTube, all of these free resources where you're like, okay, I, I want to get into fitness. I don't know if I'm really going to like it. I need to lose weight because my doctor, whatever, whatever you can find all these amazing resources online. And the most of the time you can find a program for free that will help immensely, which is amazing that we have all this content at our fingertips. So that's interesting that you say like, break it up because I feel like one mistake women make, including myself, quite honestly, mm -hmm. is that we think we have a very all or nothing approach to everything, right? <laughs> like yeah. I get my hour in and it's not perfect. I'm not going to mm -hmm. do it. You know, what do you say to that when it comes to movement? Because once, whether you're pregnant, have a newborn baby, like that perfectionism kind of, you know, if you're going to have that mentality, I think that's when you get into a lot of trouble. So what is really effective for weight loss across the board, all women, when it comes to working out, what is a good strategy that all women can be thinking about? I would say if you can be active for four hours a week, 
that's going to help you immensely. It's just going to leak into all these areas of your life. You know, if you wake up and you do even 20 minutes on the treadmill before your first meal, chances are you're going to eat a healthier meal because you've already been active. You've already got that movement in. You really set yourself up for the day.